two percenters. Well, we got a little quick video for you today. I'm going to address a question that I get from time to time when we're doing electrical diagnosis videos, and that is which ohm setting or resistance setting on your multimeter should you be using for different applications? So we're gonna hopefully do as we always do on this. I'm not just gonna give you the answer, but I've also got a really good demonstration here so that you will understand it and therefore you will know this for the rest of your life and you won't have to refer back to the video if you need to do a resistance measurement saying, how is that supposed to work again? It's, it's gonna be a part of you after this video. So uh, let's discuss the uh, issue real quick. Let me go get a part here. Okay, this is not an automotive part, nor is it a crack pipe, unfortunately. But what it is is a negative pressure switch from my home HVAC system. So it is part of my furnace. And unfortunately, a couple days ago, my humidifier started leaking and the idiot who installed it put it right over the furnace electronics and components. So the leaking water did a number of damages to my system. This was one of the victims too, where some water got in here and shorted this switch out. The thing is, is that it would be very hard to diagnose this shorted switch if you did not know how to properly use your multimeter's ohm settings. So that's what we are going to use as our demonstration to show you how to properly use the ohm setting for your application. So let's head over to the workbench and we will do some ohm measurements. Okay, um, well, we won't need these wiring diagrams, but uh, for you guys on my pay channel, you are going to want to tune in. I think by uh, Monday night, it should be uh, just a really good video on my own car. It is very unfortunate when you need wire diagrams on your own car, but uh, I developed a no start condition and um, it's gonna be a pretty killer video when I finish editing it. So look for that Monday, but um, this is going to be much simpler here. So. Basically, on your ohm settings for your DVOM, you are going to want to, as a rule, use the ohm setting that is closest going to match the ohms that you expect to have on your circuit. So if you are expecting an open circuit, which we need on this part, we want to set it to the 20 million ohm setting because an open circuit is infinite resistance, infinite ohms, and 20 million is our closest to it. If we are expecting a circuit with zero resistance, we will want to set it to the lowest possible setting. And that is something that people uh, not only do incorrectly, but also um, sometimes I've done it a little bit out of um, just not really necessity, but out of video. Uh, quality because setting at the lowest setting allows an audible continuity test. But again, that may not be the best application for your scenario. Okay, the way this works, this is a negative pressure switch. It is a safety component on a gas furnace for your home. And in its current state, it should be open. There should be no continuity between these contacts. This other end of the hose connects up to a fan. Uh, I believe it's called a draft motor. And before your furnace starts, the draft motor spins. And that is to clear out any residual gas that may be trapped in the furnace before the igniter starts so you don't get an explosion. So without continuity at these contacts, the gas will not light. And the fan operating creates a suction through this hose that will close this switch, cause continuity, and that triggers the uh, furnace control computer to know that it is safe to light the gas because the draft motor is working. So if you listen very carefully, if I suck on the end of the hose, you can hear there's a switch in there that clicks on and off. In its current state, it again should be open. If this switch is not open, then the furnace computer is not going to light the gas because it is going to detect that there is a short in this switch. So the switch would not be able to detect if that fan is operating or not. So as a safety feature, the furnace will not light. So in this current state, this switch should be open. What we're going to do is we're going to connect up our leads the way most people would. And a lot of people, because like me, they like that 
audible sound on a connection, they're going to test their continuity. That works. And they're going to look for continuity on this switch. We're going to connect it up. You can see it does read OL. Let's make sure that's in the camera there. OL means out of limit. So we are assuming that this switch, of course, is open. When I apply vacuum, we can see we get continuity. So we would look and say this switch works. Here is the problem. Because we are not using the correct ohm setting, we are missing that this switch actually is shorted, but it's at such a high resistance, but it is still shorted, um, that we're not able to detect it with this low of a setting on our meter. So let's do this. We're going to set this to the 20 million ohm scale. Now, of course, it should still read out of limit. This should be a completely open circuit. Okay, we're going to set this over to the 20 million ohm position and check it out. So as you can see, there is actually some level of continuity between these contacts. It is enough that the furnace computer is detecting that there is a short in this switch. And it's just detectable because we are using the correct setting on the meter because it has such incredibly high resistance. Okay, this is the new switch that is going to fix the problem and allow my furnace to work again. So we're going to connect that up. And let me get the hose on there. Okay, again, going to turn it on set it to the 20 million ohm reading, we see that it is indeed a true open. There is absolutely no connection with this switch, no matter how high resistance there would be from the water contamination like in this one. That is a true open switch. So that is the proper way to test it. Now, we can do this the other way. Because when I apply vacuum to this, we want to see no resistance, at least I believe we want to see no resistance. We want perfect continuity between those contacts. And it looks like we have it. You see, as we apply the vacuum, we have no resistance. However, again, think of the rule of thumb. We're going to set our meter closest to the resistance level we expect. We expect zero ohms of resistance on this closed switch, so we want to set our meter as close to zero ohms as possible. Now let's try it. And we see that there is approximately half an ohm of resistance, which actually is within spec for this particular switch. But if we were supposed to have absolutely no resistance whatsoever, we see that this would have failed and we would have missed it with the incorrect setting on our meter. All right, with the money I saved fixing my own furnace, I can finally buy that new set of Yeezys I've been saving up for. So as you can see, it is very important that you understand how to use the multimeter correctly and not miss a diagnosis when you think you have an open. Maybe you actually don't. You got to set that meter correctly. Hopefully this was helpful and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.